Jeff Coons, lovely to have you uh, today. Thank you very much for your time. We're uh, a huge fans of your work and, and Australia has for a long time looked at your practice uh, since uh, the early days of Puppy at the MCA. But we wanted to share with our audiences a little bit of an insight into uh, what motivates you and, and what sort of uh, got your career started. So could I just ask you a, a, an initial question around your early experience and, as an artist and what motivated you to use such simple everyday objects? You know, Tony, what's always motivated me are, are feelings and sensations. And uh, when I started to realize uh, as a young artist that, you know, through personal iconography, you know, you can control how you feel. And I could, you know, replicate sensations and I could control them. And then I realized I could make them more intense and I could also communicate those feelings with others. Uh, that's really what kind of hooked me, you know, into really enjoying art and to love communication. What interests me is the triggers that you've then gone for are sort of humble everyday objects, whether it's a, a basketball or a vacuum cleaner or, or, a, or a simple balloon. You know, I think that comes from not wanting to be intimidated by art. You know, I, I grew up a middle class background. I went to public schools. And, you know, I, I went to art museums as a child, but I, I, I guess I refused to have art kind of intimidate me. But I realized that it was on an edge that, oh, if you didn't follow art theory or if you didn't know this aspect of art history, uh, which I didn't. But I realized that you don't need that, that, you know, art is really about you know, uh, it's a process of self-acceptance. You learn how to go inward, you learn how to accept yourself, and you can expand your parameters. You can become, and it's really about becoming. And I wanted to share that with other people and to communicate that art can be a tremendous empowering vehicle. Uh, but it, you just have to watch that you don't believe in its ability to disempower, which is intimidation. You've moved more back, more into art history in more recent decades, but there's still something about the simplicity and the, the work that's easy to connect. It's just the context in which you then provide for it. You know, I came into contact with Marcel Duchamp's idea, the ready-made. And what I enjoy about the ready-made is the embrace of the world around us. And everything's already here. I had a mentor, Ed Paschke, uh, when I went to school in uh, Chicago at the School of the Art Institute. And uh, Ed told me, you know, everything's here. You just have to open yourself up to it. So I, I really have tried to develop an aesthetic, which is about embracing everything and the removal of judgments. And when you remove judgments, everything is there to be incorporated into your ideas. Nothing is segregated. It's complete empowerment. But soon as you start to make judgments, you start to segregate. And that segregate, that causes anxiety and disempowerment. I love the ready-made because it's about accessibility. It reminds you every moment, everything is here and we're surrounded by it. And when you start to focus on your interests, and that's really all that we have uh, that motivates us and is our guide way, our path in life, is our interests. And what could be you know, more pleasurable than following our interests? And so uh, we're surrounded by it. And when you focus on these interests, it really connects you to kind of this underlying universal vocabulary, this kind of metaphysical world where time and space bend. And the most normal everyday object can take you to this place and you can just bend time. But I think this is what keeps people constantly looking at your practice because you do go from the banal to the beautiful figure out of antiquity. I mean, you, you are sort of, what, what you find as relatable has really shifted quite dramatically over the decades in, in really interesting ways. You know, yes, you can see playing with different materials or looking at maybe different historical objects. But, you know, the accessibility and the openness of all information, I think, is really kind of a constant uh, theme in my work. And also that of memory. 
And, uh, you know, thinking back to our childhood, uh, a lot of times people will think, oh, you know, your work is playing with the idea of toys. Uh, but my work is really just embracing uh, memory and uh, the beauty of things that we've come across. And when we find relevance in something, the profoundness of that is equal to any other form of profoundness or something of deep meaning. Just that sense of connectivity. If that kind of gives us a post, some place that we can kind of stake out and kind of in time and in place, uh, that's really enough. That's an, enough relevance for anything to achieve that. So in that context, with, with such a large, diverse, celebrated body of work, is there one particular work or series that partic is particularly poignant to you? You know, for me, it's really the journey and it's, uh, it's about becoming. And, uh, you know, when I was younger, I started taking art lessons as a child, seven years of age. And I really didn't know what, uh, you know, the power of art could be. But when I started to get in contact with this aspect of controlling my feelings and then realizing I could communicate that uh, with others. I mean, this whole journey just became a journey of constantly becoming. So today, the work that I'm working on now is what I'm most involved with, connected to, uh, find the most uh, relevance in. But I can look back and I can look at kind of the, uh, the beginnings of all these works. I can look at the Venus, that's a part of the porcelain series, and I can connect her to my first, you know, reflective mirror pieces. But I see my interest in those works has uh, developed. And I think the generosity of those works, uh, the desire to communicate, to inform people uh, of the potential that we all have as human beings has uh, continued to develop and become a very relevant part of my uh, my work, my uh, desire uh, is really to help inform people and to participate in an objective experience. I'm glad you used the word generous because I think that really does epitomize your aesthetic and that's what I've always found so satisfying and rewarding about your practice. You mentioned Venus, which of course was commissioned by us with you uh, during, during a very challenging COVID time. The work, many people are probably not aware, was manufactured in Germany. The technical virtuosity of this work has been one of the things that has just really flabbergasted people who've cited it. Could you give us a bit of an insight into how the precision and scale of this work could be produced so beautifully? It started with enjoying uh, different porcelain pieces uh, from the 17th, 18th uh, century up to the present day. And I started to just look at these porcelain figures and. What I really enjoyed was the different gradations that would be applied to their surface. So if you, if you look at the Venus sculpture uh, in your collection, and you also look at your collection of these 18th century porcelains, you'll notice that the hands will be painted, then there'll be a gradation coming into the wrist, then there'll be a flesh tone, and then there'll be a gradation maybe on an elbow or around the inside of an arm or in the fabrics. And these gradations, the whole concept of a gradation informs us about time. And it does that because automatically our mind is thinking of a sunrise and a sunset. So whenever we look up at a sky, you know, we're getting a, a gradation. And so I wanted to play with the metaphysics of this experience. We already have this very intoxicating mirror polish surface that is informing us of the right here, right now, that this moment is happening. It's an affirmation of you, the viewer, and it's now. If you move, you know, the reflection moves. Everything's about the here and now. But when you move into the way the work is, is painted in these gradations, you're able to start to kind of time travel. The image working with something from the 18th century is showing this kind of uh, relevance uh, of images in the past and tying us really to Platonism and the idea of an ideal form where, you know, uh, you know a piece of cloth is a, a piece of cloth or, you know, uh, 
chariot is a chariot, uh, arrows in a quiver, or, you know, it's the idea of arrows in a quiver. You know, Venus, it's the idea of Venus. It's really about an eternal form, about an idea. And this metaphysical experience, and what makes it completely metaphysical, is that the viewer has an essence of their own potential. It's the excitement that you feel from this intoxicating surface, these colors, the saturation, this tie to history, and at the same time, this essence of your own potential, the excitement, the biological excitement you have for your own future. That's really what the Venus wants to communicate. And this is where reflection plays such a big part in the experience, doesn't it? Which is something that we've seen in a lot of your work in recent times. Uh, affirmation. You know, affirmation uh, of the self, uh, of you, and that everything's about you. You know, if um, you leave the room, you know, that the art leaves the room. And for me, you know, uh, paintings are an amazing tool, they're an amazing vehicle. Sculptures are amazing uh, vehicles, but that's not the art. Uh, when we experience art, it's that aspect, that essence that we have for the expansion of our own parameters, our own being, what we can become. I mean, if you're a young dancer and somebody looks at the Venus, you know, maybe they're, you know, on a subconscious level thinking, you know, I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited about my, for my, about myself, and I think I can do a double twirl. Or if it's an architect, they could be excited and they could feel something grounding and they could have an idea for a stronger foundation for something. It's all about the essence of your own potential. But I also look at a work like Venus and there's been quite an emotional reaction to the work just on, the, on that notion of beauty that she's so beguiling, she's overwhelming, that she's technically brilliant. The colour, the gradation, as you say, is, is so perfectly um, and harmoniously um, taken across the surface. What is your relationship to the idea just of beauty? Uh, I think I find a lot of beauty in simplicity and in you know, the idea of embracing uh, simplicity. So there is a lot of time, a lot of attention, a lot of details in being able to manufacture uh, the Venus, to make her, to bring her into being. Uh, starting with finding a model that I really like. And, uh, you know, I love Meyer's uh, sculpture, this, uh, this porcelain Venus that was my model. But then to use the technology to capture everything about it, its surface, its size, its details of what happened to it in the firing, how it was painted, how the paint was applied, uh, and, you know, everything about it, to be able to capture that and to uh, carry that information through. It's because I want to maintain every perfection and every imperfection in the piece. Because at the end of the day, uh, Tony, what I'm trying to do is to communicate to the viewer that you are perfect. Everything about you, you know, your history, your experiences, Everything that's wonderful and even those things that we find in ourselves that aren't so perfect, it's for our own being, it's perfection. And it's all about this moment forward. It's about it, not embracing the perfection and imperfection of that object, but it's about embracing ourselves. And once we can do that, we can go out into the world and we can, uh, you know, feel confident to open ourselves up to life experience. And what that really leads you to is where you're able to accept other people and to truly be engaged as a human being within your community and not only want to increase your own parameters, but the parameters of your whole community. It's interesting because that, that incredible sense of optimism you just give in, in, in describing it in that way is exactly what I observed in watching people just come in and experience Venus in, 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 in the first instance. But just, just, just on a technical level, you talk about having a beautiful object and you're talking objects that are very small, that you're, you're turning into 2.4 metre stainless steel sculptures. That's an incredible leap uh, intellectually, technically, in every other way. Could you just give us a little bit of insight into just that transition of how you go from, from the starting porcelain figure to this monumental steel structure? Uh, well, first I would, uh, I would get the object and I would make a CAT scan of the object. 
And the reason for that, I would want to get all the details that are in crevices in different areas that when you would use a white light scan, that you wouldn't be able to pick up that information. And then eventually I would do a white light scan and then merge that information together. Now, uh, within bringing this information together, there are reverse engineering processes that take place, uh, that would take place. I would go back into it and we would be dealing with the surface control of it, removing any type of kind of chattering or information that happens that really isn't part of the piece itself to remove that and maintain the kind of the integrity of the original uh, work. But then we would also then start to use photogrammetry to be able to capture all the information on the surface of the piece, the way these gradations were painted, the way maybe the hair of the Venus was painted. And we're paying attention to all of that and trying to, as authentically as possible, capture that and to transfer it in the exact location that it was, but also uh, the colors that are there, et cetera. Now, I always feel like if I want to communicate something and if I alter something, that it just helps make a better communication, I'll do that because I don't want to be tied to something where, oh, I can't change anything. Then I'm being controlled by this whole process instead of being able just to try to make the work that is the most effective for me. But I usually am trying to maintain and keeping everything as close as possible to the original. Uh, then all of this will get uh, re-engineered to be able to be produced in stainless steel. We have our own alloy, a special alloy that's manufactured to give me the highest reflectivity uh, of the work. And also, and that means it'll polish to the smoothest surface and give me the brightness I want. Uh, we will have that work, uh, that metal forged. And then from that, it'll be milled uh, out of the forged steel and uh, everything will be polished, brought to the surface and uh, smoothly, right, a correct surface. And then we will uh, paint the piece, which involves a lot of stenciling, creating special 3D masks, 2D masks. Uh, the list goes on and on. I mean, a work like uh, Venus I worked on for four years. And of that time, two years are really directly within the physical production of it. Another part of that two years, just working on the computer information, gathering my model, getting it scanned, working, doing this reverse engineering. But it was a total of four years from the beginning to the end. Well, it shows. Um, it is it is a stunning, it's a masterpiece uh, as far as we're concerned. And what I'm loving in listening to you talk is just the way that you just challenge yourself, you know, artistically and technically all the way through from start to finish. And I suppose as a, as a final question, just on the notion of challenging yourself, what are you doing to challenge yourself going forward into your future practice? You know, I, I try to pinch myself every day, you know, to have the opportunity to have a, a dialogue with my work, to have this platform to make things and to be able to be in communication with people with these ideas. So I, I follow my interests. I mean, it's, uh, it's the only thing that uh, we have. And so the interests that I have, I continue to follow and focus on them and just try to present the ideas that are aroused and stirred by them uh, to bring them forth in kind of the most concise way I can. Uh, I guess I'm pulled to ideas of profoundness that again are in a way that uh, seem very, very uh, accessible because all information is accessible. You know, uh, Tony, I always like to think about that uh, last moment on maybe our deathbeds where all of a sudden there's a consciousness that comes across us of what we could have done and how easily we could have done everything that we wanted to do or could have thought about doing, but somehow we're just blocked from doing it. And, I, you know, I, I don't want to have that experience on my deathbed. I would really like to have it, you know, today or tomorrow morning, just really be open to have the highest level of consciousness of, of what, you know, able to do with my own life, with one's own life. And I think it's about just removing fear and anxiety uh, about the, the situation we find ourselves in, you know, uh, being a human being, 
being a part of society, not having certain information that we'll ever be aware of, but still opening ourselves up as wide to this experience as possible. And I do think we can probably feel essence of simplicity that will make us feel extremely connected. Wow. Well, um, it's fair to say that um, the way that you have continued to achieve and inspire so many artists and, and visitors to your work that um, hopefully when you do find that moment of final reflection, you'll realise that you've inspired very large parts of the entire world. So you've certainly done that here in Melbourne with your Venus and your goodwill, both yourself and your studio, has been phenomenal. So thank you very much for everything you've done for us and I hope that it's an ongoing dialogue between us and yourself. Uh, you know, Tony, thank you. I'm absolutely thrilled uh, that you, you have the piece and that, uh, you know, it, it's there. And I, 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 I'm thrilled about it. I love following the piece. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs>